meeting to order on April 4th, 2015, 7 o'clock for City of St. John. Tom, I'd ask you to get a blessing. Thank you. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for the City of St. John. Thank you for moving on the hearts of these City Council members to serve the community of St. John. Thank you for reminding these council members of the importance of not just listening to others in the community, but reaching to you in prayer to find the more perfect way of governing and serving the community. Move in the hearts of these council members to govern with justice and peace for all men and women and children. Be with this council this evening and make decisions that will serve the people of St. John. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, sir. God bless you. Okay, I'd ask if there's any additions to the agenda. There are. You got um, the movie. The city attorney is going to talk about the moving fees, mowing fees under the legal city of attorney section, and then under citizen comments, the USD 350 superintendent wants to talk about the sidewalks. Bob, I would add um, just for clarification on the agenda. Under administration, it's got listed executive session, um, interview, and I talked with Vicki this afternoon on interview of, regarding what Ruben wants to talk about. Really, the, he's, he's looking at talking about policy issues with regard to employee salary that needs to be done in public, and then um, so it needs to reflect that it's an executive session, uh, discuss not elected personnel, possible hiring of two like the personnel not true the discussion on salaries. I don't think that motion Thank you. Any more additions? I need to take a motion. Second. We have a motion and a second. Going motion. Uh, is there any citizens' comments other than Josh Marr? Yeah, we got a vote on that. We got a vote. All in favor? <laughs> I don't vote because I'm the mayor. Uh, okay, three citizen comments from the rest of you people? You want to be on the agenda or anything? Maybe you already know. Consent agenda. <clears throat> Approve the minutes of special meeting 717 2015. Approve minutes of the regular meeting 721 15. Approve the corrected minutes of a regular meeting of 7715. Approve appropriation ordinance 83 of 2015, amount of $8,619.50. And approve appropriation ordinance 8-4-2015, amount of $78,523.82. I'll give a motion to approve that. Second. Whatever. All in favor? Again? Motion carries. Three to zero. Police Department. Uh, the only thing I've got is we got uh, everything stripped uh, out and off the blazer to put up the steel bid. I'm missing newspaper deadline today, so that'll go on the newspaper next week. Um, and we'll probably just run that for two weeks. Okay, have you got a dollar figure set on it or just steel bid? Just steel bid. Yeah. Fire Department. Mike? Oh, I mean, thank you. Moving right along. <laughs> city clerk. Okay. So, city clerk's report. There's really I don't have much for the city clerk report. I do want to talk to you guys about um, outsourcing your 2016 budget. Um, as you guys know, when you guys hired me, I, I've never done a budget before. The mayor was going to help, but she is on vacation for another week. Okay. Um, I've talked to Nita, the county clerk, and she says that we can miss the deadline as long as we get it into her by October 1st. Okay? You guys have two quotes in there. Um, one's from Adams, who did your guys' audit, or did our audit in the last year. You're looking at uh, 22000 to 2500 to have them do it. Pros for that is that they have all the information. 
they've already done the audit, um, they have the county clerk's information, they have the treasurer's information. Your next one is the one that you guys are looking at doing with your mid-year audit. They're requesting um, 800 to 1,000, but then again, we're going to have to send up all the information because they're not going to know. It'll come out of the account and auditing services. That's where we're going to take it from, whichever one you choose. I'm recommending that that's what will be the best and fastest way to get the audit done for this year. Next year, after I've taken some classes, if you guys want to renegotiate it and do it, then it, it's it probably wouldn't be we probably have to send it to him the only pro that you're looking at with Adams is that she could start it tomorrow I mean all I would have to do is email her today and say get started on it and she would get started on it Adams knows your Adams knows everything. They know where the funds go. They know your budget all from last year. They know pretty much what you guys did. Not saying that James from the other one. Not saying that they want to do a good enough job either. It's just that they haven't done your audit. They can do that audit. I would think maybe the situation being might be best to do that ground ball least for this budget because they've worked with all this stuff for several years. They've seen the budget every year. Yeah. As far as council is concerned, I think that's probably good money by me. Get it going. That way I'm not talking about that. $1,500 goes a long way, though. It does go a long way. I don't have a problem with that's why I was asking how big a deal it was to get the information. That's $1,500 to $1,700 difference. So, I don't know. Yeah, what they're looking at, what you're going to need to send them is you're going to have to send them their, your audit from the last audit and then getting the county clerk's information, the treasurer's information, and then getting everyone's budget information to them. Now, Jonna, um, last year she pays for Adams to review your to review the budget, so they already know what your budget was last year. So they would have that information. Too. City and Stafford County that actually still does their budget, and that includes Radium and Seward. Everyone else outsources their budget. What do you think, Troy? Well, it's a lot easier, or maybe it's a little quicker for Adam for $1,700. I think we will try and save that money. I mean, they're going to be doing our midterm audit anyway, we're probably going to have to give them a lot of that information anyway for that. So we'll have it. So, you know, I mean, my, my motion would be trying to save the money and go with more money. Well, I think the situation here, we're already past our deadline on the budget or what it's supposed to be in. I think we also have had a ground ground ball at least this year, if we find something in our midterm audit, it might be possible to look at the situation. I kind of feel like that's the other thing if we're going to do that. Is it going to be too much more? I don't think so. I don't know that. It's up to you guys.
Oh, that's all right. I thought you were going to let me talk when you were talking about the sidewalk. Uh, that's all right. Well, that's kind of what I had to um, You mentioned that in the superintendent of schools that I'm not here in my capacity as superintendent. I just am a citizen and uh, I serve on the economic development board. And uh, you know, I'm interested in you know, lots of things that go on in the city. But I wanted to just give you my thoughts on the on the sidewalk project. You know, we've got a grant uh, in front of you that. Uh, uh, you know, almost two hundred thousand uh, dollars, and very small investment from on the city's part to uh, add sidewalks down First Street. Uh, uh, you know, you're in this position to improve the city, and thank you for doing that. I know it's not a not a not an easy position, so I think that sidewalk's a great way to improve the the area. Uh, you know, for safety, it's it's needed. Uh, there's kids riding their bikes, people walking on that street. Uh, and it's not a safe safe situation. I think this would help improve the safety. I know there's other priorities that you all have uh, to take care of in the city as far as infrastructure. Uh, this grant doesn't pay for those other things. It pays for that sidewalk. Um, I know grants aren't free money. Uh, there's always some investment strings tied to it. Uh, for $8,000 in labor, uh, it's, that's as close as you get to free money with grants. So. Uh, I would encourage you to think about that. You know, I have sidewalk on two sides of my house. Um, is it fair to put in a new sidewalk that the city's going to maintain, but they're not going to come maintain mine? Uh, I don't. I don't care. I don't think it's appropriate to for me to say, well, that's not fair. Don't do that if you're not going to maintain mine. Uh, I think you're improving the community. Uh, I, that's fine with me as a as a property owner in the city. Uh, I think it's a good thing for the community. Uh, and uh, Pastor Tom mentioned his prayer about the whole community. I think this is a situation where you do need to consider the needs of the entire community, not just uh, not just the ones that that it affects there. And I understand that uh, people that have property along there, uh, I, I can understand how they might be upset about the city putting in a new sidewalk in their yard, uh, but. But it's the entire community that's going to get the benefit. So I know it's difficult in your position to uh, consider the whole community and the benefit for the whole community when uh, you know, there are people that are vocal against it. Um, so I know you have a tough job to do, and uh, uh, you hear you have to consider all sides of that. I just ask you to support that grant and, and vote to to move ahead with it. I know there'll be challenges with it, and trees. And, Utilities, whatever. I, I think there's some hurdles to overcome there, but if they can be overcome. I'd encourage you to vote to, to support that sidewalk project. Again, thank you for what you do. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. We've got it kicked up on the table. We don't know if you got anything else with nope. you. That's it. We covered it. Okay, moving on. Administration superintendent Stephanie Smith from the swimming pool. Oh, I just need to get some verification from you guys on some dates. Um, the last day that the pool will be open, regular season, will be August 23rd. That next week is when school starts, so we'll be closed that week but will reopen on Saturday and Sunday, one to six normal hours. Again, then we'll have the PE Pro PE program. They've applied for having to come in the 31st through the 4th. Um, and you guys had approved that for them to do that. They have Trish, um, and then she's also gonna check with some of the guards to see if they can get other classes to help. I'll help on that Friday when she has grades one through six, because I'll be off work that day. Um, then we'll also be open Labor Day weekend, that Saturday and Sunday, and then the pool will be done. Except for, I had a request from Laura Davis for the Life School program to come swimming. They want to come September 1st and September 8th. 
and that would be an added couple of days that I'd go in, but I don't mind going in and checking the water to make sure it's safe for them to be in there. And then having the 8th, the last official day, to be completely done with the pool. Um, I do have guard coverage for those days for the after school program, so that's not a problem either. I just need your thoughts on are those dates okay? Do you have any objections to any of those? <laughs> okay. Okay. If you're happy with it, I'm happy with it. How's it doing? How'd it go this year? It's going real good. Short of the swimsuit problem we had at the beginning, it was a little rough start, but we had some issues there with the company getting our stuff on time and getting it like we needed it. And so, <coughs> other than that, it went good. We've got a few issues down at the pool that Ruben and I will be addressing through maybe at a later date to figure out what's going on down there. So, but we're good. Thank you guys very much because I've really enjoyed it. <laughs> are you guys thinking about, are you still thinking about it for next year? I am. As a matter of fact, that's one of the things I will address. I don't know if we'll be doing it now or later, but I'd like to maybe try to be hired a little sooner, not paid more, just hired sooner so we can get guards in place and assistant managers and things at a sooner time because I think that was part of the problem with the uniforms and the guard suits this year was everything was just ran too much too late and people have people in classes and knowing whether they're going to graduate from the class and we just had a lot going on so I think maybe a sooner decision on that kind of stuff would be greatly appreciated on my part anyway. Why don't you come in and talk to us? Okay. Okay. All right. Sounds great. Okay. Thank you. Any questions for Stephanie? No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. He's up. Get out of here. Drag out the chair. All right. Um, I brought this standby policy to you guys. Just brought it up here quite a while back. Uh, and I handed out uh, little packets here last week meeting. Um, the reason for the standby policy is we have nothing where if we have a major storm coming in in the winter or in the fall where it's an ice storm. We have nothing in place. We have nothing in place to where I can hold some employees here. Um, and what the standby policy does, it's not a, you know, put everybody on call. It is tell them, hey, here's the deal. You're gonna get paid a certain amount each day for the weekend. They don't have to come in and do the on-call duties because we already have a person on call. They do the on-call duties. It keeps them around. Um, that being, you know, if we know we got a big storm coming in, there's over a certain percentage chance of major snow or ice. It's just, it's comforting as a supervisor, but also as a coworker, knowing that you're going to have help when something like that coming in. And you so you let them know a couple days in advance, hey. We have this coming in. I'm going to put you on standby, and like it says, if you, you know, if it forecast changes on Friday afternoon and it leaves, take them off the standby. We don't have to worry about it. Yeah, everything's fine. But that way, it keeps them here, keeps them knowing. You know, nobody has a chance to go. Oh, you know what? I want to go to Wichita, even though we have a chance of 10 to 15 inches of snow coming in the next day, and it's. It's not going to change anything. You know, if someone has already has a vacation lined out and approved beforehand, they're not subject to the standby because it's not it's not fair to just have the blue take away from stuff they've had planned and approved for a long time. And so that's you know they you guys had asked me to write up a, a policy on that. And if you have any questions on it, I'm more than happy to answer. You also. I think, did you get one of those? Well, as long as it's, I don't have it in my package, as long as it hasn't changed to what we talked about. No, because I think, uh, I think you, because you had asked me about the on call duties on there, and there's the standby call, like I said, it's $40 a day. And what it does is it keeps them here and they get paid to not, it gives them some payment to not just go to the bar and get tanked knowing that there's going to be a storm coming.
additional five million. Because I think he gave that to you at the last meeting. Yeah. So it wasn't a packet. And that is forty dollars per day. Per day. Is that above or beyond any holiday pay or uh, well, they'll, they won't get any, they'll get their holiday pay, or not holiday, they'll get their, they'll get their pay if they have to come in for their hours and also get the standby. Because what it is, it's, you know, if they don't get called in, then they get the $40. Uh, you know, like I told you guys when I worked at the state, this is how it happened. Well, they, they gave you the standby pay anyway as an incentive to go ahead and come in, it's pretty much you're getting paid to answer the phone. And so you get your you get your pay on top of it. Counselor, you're paying people to as Ruben puts remain sober and remain able to work in case you need to work. Um, sometimes there's problems when cities don't pay those employees anything and they're restricted from doing things such as they'd be restricted from running the credit or running the Wichita or whatever. So this pays them for the you're looking more just for like bad weather. Yeah, if we it's not 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 no, this isn't gonna. You rarely run into having snow to, and stuff. Yeah, like you that. rarely run into having to put people on standby. Ninety percent of the time of the year, what it is is, like I said, in the winter and the fall, you know, they come in and they say, hey, there's an eighty percent chance of an inch of ice. Pretty good chance we want everybody here. And especially right now, where we don't have a lot of people here, you want everybody here. And you know, that's what that's for. If you know, if it's uh, April or May and they come up on Thursday and just like, you know, just like this that storm where they were broadcasting it out four or five days in advance, hey, this weekend's gonna be real bad. You know, you tell them on Thursday, well then if it changes by Friday when you leave, you take them off a of standby and you don't have to pay them for the weekend if it changes. I mean, there's, it's a, it's, there's a cushion in there to allow for both directions. But it, it's not something that's gonna happen once a month or anything like that. It's, it's for a designated, we have this much chance of this bad of a situation and you know anything under four inches, four to six inches, we can handle that with a couple trucks. That's nothing. But you get six to ten inches, you gotta start getting the trucks, the loaders, the maybe even the grader out. It takes more personnel and you gotta make sure that they're here for that. I don't have a problem with the policy. Is that something we just need to change in the policy or make a motion for this? I think you can give them permission to adopt this as the department. Well, just, uh, you don't think you'll need to amend that from time to time? I mean, you, you haven't had anything in place. We've what never had that? anything in place before. It's just kind of been a, by, hope they show up. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we ought to, uh, permission, is to, sorry. Is that, I think you just give them permission to maintain an on-call policy and then you guys uh, agree to the compensation rate of, of $40 a day. Should that be, uh, should we get the policy out? Look, see what's already in the policy? There is, there's nothing in the policy. That, that is why I brought this up. There's no policy in the book for any kind of standby or anything. It's just, that's it. Only for the guy that's on call. Yeah. That's the only thing it's in. That's the only person that actually is required to show up. So this would be for all? This is for the rest of the employees. Because the on call guy, he's already getting $40 a day. He's already in town. He's going to be here. It's just making sure those guys don't decide, hey, I want to go to the Wichita to watch the movies. Even though we know we're supposed to have eight inches of snow, I don't want to be around when it happens, so I'm going to go to Wichita. That kind of situation. I was just bringing it for you guys to look at. Then the on call responsibilities. Um, that's on the next page. Um, that's something that I think we need to get on our, on, we need to go through all of our uh, employee job descriptions. Um, 
I know that there is a, what do you call it, a, there's a line in there that says any other duties as assigned, but that is a very broad statement to cover what could happen. Uh, this gives a definite statement when that person applies for the position, they can get their job description and there's no question on, you can't just pop it up on someone, they know ahead of time to where that doesn't become a problem when you tell them they have to be on call and they say, well, it's not my job description, I don't have to do it. And this mainly right here is me. for the, uh, the Monday at 7 to the next Monday at 7. That's because Mel, when he was here, he took over Monday morning till Thursday evening. And we were just on call from Friday morning until Sunday evening or Monday morning. So we were, we now have to be on call unless the next superintendent decides that he would like to, he or she would like to be on call during the week. Then this is how it was before Mel was here. Am I correct, Jeff? My guys already know that. They knew that coming in. They worked from seven Monday morning to seven Monday morning. But you know, we've we've stayed it that way from the time that they've come to work. I mean, it's it's the uptown guys that have a little variance on the problems of sticking around. My guys don't have any problems staying around. They like the overtime. So is that something we just need to add to job descriptions or just as a uh, policy? Yeah. I think it should be, I mean, I don't think there's anything in the policy books about it yet, but. Sorry? That ought to be in hand, but should we? Yeah, I mean, the mayor's in charge of, of I guess, superintendent powers or oversight over the department heads. I guess I, I'm trying to avoid the situation where every time I do a policy change, that policy has to come to the council and it's, it's discussed. I, I think uh, probably the best way to handle it, Ruben, is, is just uh, you know, ask the mayor. This is the only thing the city has to do is provide those personnel rules yeah. um, and keep three copies. So um, I, I think with as long as you guys um, are fine with it, meaning that if, if you know, maybe from time to time uh, we just need to have this discussion, the department has to just get a discussion with the mayor, but I don't think the council needs to adopt them. I think the mayor gets the option to adopt uh, those type of personnel policies whenever she wants. Or he wants to stay. Alrighty. Well, then on to the next uh, disease and dead trees. What, we're, what we have here is we're, you know, we've had the drought the past few years. Um, we do actually have a ordinance against dead and diseased trees. Um, the ordinance reads that it's up to the landowner on any of their properties to remove at their cost the trees. I know that removal of trees is not cheap. It's a very expensive project and um, one thing I was thinking on that is if it's in the right of way, in the city right of way, because that is, poses a problem for us, if it falls in the street, we gotta go clean it up anyway. That's, that's how it works. I was gonna see maybe if there's something we could do where if it's in the right of way, we've got a chipper, we've got trucks, we've got a loader, we've got chainsaws, we can take them down. Because like I said, they're gonna end up being a problem for us anyway when they fall in the street or fall in the power lines. Um, and then anything that's on their property, up off the right of way, that's on them. Because we've, I know we've got quite a few places now where we're we're getting a lot of dead trees, and once they start falling over, it's pretty much it's a half dozen one way, six six on the other. You're going to pick it up one way or the other, and I think we should try to be a little proactive on these. Um, for the the trees, if we notify them of the trees, it's the same as the mowing policy almost. They have a certain amount of time to get it off. And that's something where we're going to have to figure out what we want to do there because 
like I said, I know that it's a lot more expensive to remove a tree than it is to have someone mow the yard. So that's going to be, I don't know really what we want to do with that, but the, the ones, like I said, the ones on the right of way, I think we can probably take care of for that. I don't know what the, what the proper channel on that is, and that's why I brought it to you guys. It is what I, I don't know if they, you guys have to agree to that or approve of it or. I think if it's on the right of way, the city can do whatever they want. Alive and dead, as far as I know, right, Jeff? We take care of the ones in the alleys most generally if they're going to hit the power line. We will take them down. And a lot of times people will request we just drop them and they'll clean them up. You know, with the stuff in the front and that stuff and then their yards. Why? A lot of times they'll take out a service, you know, or something like that. But we don't feel obligated to go up in there and take it out on our time at our cost. But we do do it to keep to keep the primary lines clear. Uh, with that. We let Which would still be in the right way, right? Uh, a lot of not in the back. It's Unless it's, you know, it's... If we only have the 16 foot easement or whatever it is, a lot of times they're at the back of the property, but 40 foot tree will drop, you know, over the top of the primary. So to save losing, you know, two blocks of customers or whatever the case may be, why well, we just go ahead and get them down to the point that they at least won't fall damage some of the bar. So the city can do anything to ensure safety and service in the city of Kill Leeds. Uh, we need trees, the streets, alleys, avenues, lanes, squares, public grounds. The city has the right to, uh, to maintain those trees. You know, we maintain tree in an unsafe condition somewhere. But then uh, you can order uh, any tree on private property that's considered dangerous dead or diseased. You can order that or do it. So it depends on how many people you want to upset. Very few. <laughs> <laughs> I would say if it's in the right of way, if it's dead, it's city property to take care of it. Okay. As far as the ones on personal property, I don't know. And you can only do so when such trees constitute a hazard to life and property. I will say I will. I will go just worry about our. I'd just worry about the right of way. Yeah, I don't want to worry about the land. Okay. Um, for the weeds, we are getting an overabundance of fine weed um, in a lot of places. And we go out and we spray it on the right of way. And then we come back and it has come right back onto it because it'll be, it'll be all over. Um, I believe by looking at the ordinance, it pretty much says we can go on there and we can spray it anywhere in town on properties. I mean, that's because it says in there we are not uh, not bound. We're bound to the Kansas statute. I can't read off the statute number or whatever, but it says that you can go on and you can take it. And you can either do it as a, at the cost. I believe it says it has to be at the cost of the landowner. It would be the same way you go on. And so that is something that we could do because I'm certified to spray and we have a registered uh, municipality or government registration and we that's just something we'd have to write up what we think it's gonna cost per lot or per so many thousand feet for for spray. Have you got something to kill it? Quinn Clark. Well, well, I was going to say the county sprayed mud for about four or five years. Yeah. I can fertilize it. Well, the Quinn, <laughs> you what? What else does it kill? We spray it in the parks and we spray it everywhere else. The only thing that you kill, I mean, it'll kill, uh, it'll kill buffalo or Bermuda, but you have to mix it really hot to do it. There is a mixture rate for it where you won't kill it. And that's what it's for. Quinn chloric is almost specifically used just for binding. It will kill other um, broadleaf weeds, but it is specifically made for bindweed. They have, uh, it's called a Q4 Plus that we can get from Van Deese that pretty much is 240 in Quinclorate. But the Quinclorate 
you can buy it by the jug, one pound jug in granules, dump it in a tank, and that is just for vine weed. And that's what we take out and spread the vine weed on the right of the wood. And as I put in there, since I am the legally licensed person for the city to spray, I would do the mixing and I would do the spraying because that's not something I would want to get messed up. Council, I may be aware that vine weed is considered obnoxious weeds. So that probably takes. I don't know because I, this is a county issue. I've never had to deal with the actual statutes, but you may not even need it to provide notice for vine weed. Because I correct me if I'm wrong, but I certainly need to spray that. Let's see, seeds form. Yeah, it's spray it's a spring and a fall deal. You don't want to spray it in the summer. Because once it's already started flowering out and going like crazy, with it, it's just putting seeds out everywhere. But it's just to a point where either we need to stop spraying for it because it's wasting money on chemical, or we need to take care of it. If we stop spraying it on our right of way, it's going to end up the right of ways. Our right of ways are going to be full, of it. and then it's going to be real bad. Still, no matter what, talk to about it. Well, yeah, I, that's why I brought it up because I want to know what you guys want to do with it. I, mean, I don't want to just go in someone's yard and just start spraying chemical because I know that, that would be probably a real entertaining morning. Spray on anytime you want to go. I've been walking on my sidewalk. But that, that's the thing is I, I want to make sure that we have an agreed upon way to handle that. But I know there's places in town you can't spray for vine weed either. I don't think you want to be spraying around the greenhouse over on my property. No. And I've got vine weed over there. Yeah. But how do you take care of it? I, my, I'm not going to let my insurance pay for a whole greenhouse. And that's why I asked what else does it kill. I'm not going to take a chance of spraying it at my place and let it drift over into the greenhouse and killing off everything you have. Well, part of that too is you when you spray you have to take into account the wind and the temperature and everything else. You don't just go out there. You know that Marshall. You I know that. You don't go out there. But and I, spray I don't spray hardly anything around my place. Yeah. Period. I mean so that's Well it, one of the things is is technically it is on your property and as long as the wind's coming from a certain direction and they know that it's happening, they can close the doors down and just tell them, say, Hey, I want to get rid of this stuff. But as far as I'm concerned, I'd let, let, let the city spray it at their expense. I'd even pay for them to do it, but I'm not taking the liability for it on my personal property. Because if something goes wrong, I'm not li I don't want to be liable for it. I, I don't know. I don't know what to say. I know that that's, but that's our ordinance, and I, you know they have everybody has to follow the rules. Uh, I'm just so telling you, I don't. Well, I'm I don't have a problem you, with the I'm city spraying it. They have to understand that that's something that. You know, they're not above the rules, I, and we can't I, change the rules for around them. I realize that, and I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm just stating the fact that you know, <coughs> the city can spray my property all they want, and I'll pay for it, but you can send me a bill on it, but I'm not taking the liability for it. Yeah. We need to look into it. Yeah, let's readdress that one. Because of uh, the short handedness we have right now, we there's pretty good chance that the amount of sealing that we were going to do this year is not going to be able to be done. We're not going to be able to do as much street work as we want to. We've been We've run into water leaks and everything else. If we start a major project, it's gonna get it's gonna take a long time to finish. I don't like taking two to three weeks to finish the road projects. Um, I talked to the talked to Phil at the county. He's gonna write up a bid for us to do the uh, non-curbed streets, first, fourth, um, 
Lamoro and Broadway coming up off of Lamoro wherever there's no curb so that way we're not filling the gutters full of sand after it's sealed. Um, so I notice that East 4th, we got to do something with it. If it's starting to bust out, we're going to get the patch in and let them seal over that. I'm going to have, he hasn't got the estimate to me yet, but that should be coming here this week sometime, this week or next week. Um, oh, and around the pool. You can seal around the pool, get that done, because it's the parking in there is breaking out, and I want to get it back to these we get a lot of traffic through there all year long. <coughs> um, we need to, I've talked to Adam about this, we need to set hours for the tree dump. Uh, the camera that's out there we put this year has been especially, seems like it's just been a, a lot. People taking lumber out there, just dumping it, just all kinds, everything they can get out of their yard and just dumping it out there at the tree dump, which is illegal. Well, then we go back to look at the camera and I talk to Mel, find out the camera only works at daytime. So people are, what's happening is people are going out as soon as the sun goes down, dumping, and you don't know who it is, you never find out who it is. And so I'd like to set hours for the dump for in the summer, um, 8 o'clock, because we've always tried to have the dump open by 8 in the morning. Set it for 8 o'clock until about, what would you say, Adam? 7.30, somewhere around there, 7, 7.30? I think you could go at 8. 8 o'clock in the summer, and then in the winter, go from about 8 to 5. It'd be an hour before sunset, that way, because there's no reason to have the camera out there if we're not going to, if it's not going to be, if we can't use it. Why don't we just turn the camera on all the time? It is on all the time, it's but it only nice works in the day. Uh, <laughs> so, so when they drive out there at night, electricity out there. <laughs> but it's free electricity. So it works. It's free electricity. Well, I don't know. Yeah, but if we close the dump, because we solve the problem, right? Well, like, yeah, but I mean, setting it at seven or seven thirty, there's a lot of people that get home late and they mow their yard, and it's going to be dang near dark before they go dump, and they got to work the next day. You're just, I mean. It's, Well, the thing about it is, is if we go to put a light up out there that's off the Midwest, I think the <coughs> electricity out there is that Minnesota or who is it? Midwest. <coughs> They're going to want to put a meter up and we're going to pay for the light to be out there. Well, if we put a new camera up. So let's check in some other change in our camp up here. Light hours during the summer. They can not shut it off at 730. They're still well, there. Hey, we said two eight. hours of daylight. Well, that's fine. Uh, so, but it's one of those things where we have not we have not prosecuted anybody, to my knowledge, for dumping out there. And if we if we get caught by the state with that stuff out there, I think it's a hundred thousand dollars per occurrence. So I mean, you, it's what we got to look at. It's, it's going to cost us more than just a little bit of happiness if uh, if we get caught with. Construction material out there. So, why don't you get some bids on what it costs you to put a light up there, a different camera or something? Okay, it ain't gonna hurt to look at it. Um, the next thing for the uh, new, for the, the parks, is we're getting the new uh, playground down there uh, and putting, moving the trees over. We've been looking at the benches up at the parks. The Brown Park, for the past three years, we have had to replace or repair one bench at least once a year, and another bench we've had to repair twice because people are kicking it and breaking it on the ornate cast benches. And those are around a couple grand a piece. Well, I do not want, I don't want to keep pulling the benches out, getting them repaired, putting them back in, for people to kick them and break them. I would like to see, I'd like to request that we look into getting some benches that are made out of recycled plastic. They still look nice. I'll have to grab the uh, magazine for you guys. But they also have the option of getting them engraved. And I thought that we could go around to some of the businesses 
or advertise for people to if they would like to get their business name or something like that engraved in the bench, then they could pay for the bench, get their business name or get it as a memorial to someone and to offset the cost of the benches and we have new benches, they look nice. The what do the benches cost? The benches are, I believe they were six or they're, they're around seven hundred dollars, and they are cheaper if you buy a certain amount more than six. And there's eleven benches, I believe, total. Ruben, have you seen the old park benches? Are they around somewhere? It used to be in the square? Wood with metal? There's, there's very few of them left. There's a couple up at the pool here and there, but we got rid of them years ago. A few of them in Mansell Sandpit, probably. <laughs> I've seen them sitting out there on the sand. Did they make those benches? They're not they're not just a big block of spins and you don't look at you know, not the rubber code ones like that cool we got chalk over there. They're guaranteed fifty years no breaking. Have you seen the one down there? Well, that's weird. That's all there is. If there was something about that, was a memorial deal, and there was something about that, but I don't remember what it was. Could you guys make those? Those? Yeah. Uh, plastic. Yeah, I don't remember. Really, remember the time. No, you can make was it because it was in the square, Troy? Because it's I, I don't remember. The That's why I'm saying I don't remember what it was. But for some reason, it's just like it might have been because it's owned by the county, and that's probably the reason that it got upset. I know, but is it made out of like decking material that lasts forever? I remember. I'm just saying I don't want to get into a deal where we yeah. told somebody yeah it couldn't, and then all of a sudden we're it seems it like it had something to do with it being in the county square. Well, and that's that's the square. If the square is the county. That's a separate deal other than the city parks. Yeah, yeah. I see think, a, I think the city park actually belongs to the county. Yep, yeah, the square. And this would be for what ground, are you talking about? It's up north. Up on the hill and then down, down at Cornwall. Because there's right now, you know, there's bleachers down there at Cornwall, but there's no benches for people to sit there. And I know there are people that take their kids down there and let them play on the swings. How there's, many? Uh, how many? How many benches is at the ground for the Cornwall Park? No, uh, there's none. At Cornwell, none. There's no benches. Okay, how many is at Brown Park? There's one, two, three along the sidewalk, and then there's four around the big play area. I think that's right. And then there's one up on the hill. What? How much are the benches a piece that you're talking about? Right there. And if you order them six or more, I think they're a hundred dollars less. I think you'd have to look at that to see that's what it's down there. Six plus is like six forty one or something. How much is that you talking about? I don't know, but you want to be able to pass it down like that. Would anybody be in favor of buying six of them out of the Cornwall Fund for the Cornwall Park to start with? Couldn't they make them in the winter? They were just a metal base with plastic boards put on. Well, I believe that those are bent. I, well, here's the deal. We, I'm not. I don't want to say that we're going to start building stuff. I've got two guys, me and another guy. Steve's going to be retiring. We've got things that we've got to do too. And uh, I, I'm not trying to be 
rude here, but I, I don't want to keep, you know, I'm running into not being able to finish the projects that I had planned for this year because I don't have the personnel to do this. And wintertime, we got a lot of shop cleaning to do because we have a lot of mess to clean up. And there's two of us. I mean, well, we've got the electric department too, but, you know, if something happens, we got to go do something. We're going to have to table these benches. And I just thought that it'd be a good idea to have something where if someone wanted to pay for it, to get it donated, to have their name on it, we could put that up there and then we wouldn't even have to pay for it. Well, I got a problem with that if there's nothing we would have to do. Is there enough uh, funds in the He's saying get donations. Mm -hmm. well, He's saying get donations from businesses He's saying or people. Give businesses options to buy. Like to purchase. Buy. Let's say so you wanted to buy one, you could put Bob's Hauling or donated by Bob's Hauling or whatever you wanted to on there. He goes up in the park and everybody gets to see it. Any business? I think that's a good idea. I, I think, you know, that, that, I that, think completely, that's a good idea. That completely as eliminates as legality reasons. As as yes. can. That completely eliminates us buying them. And all we got to do is get it in. Go put, the, go put it in. I, I agree with that. As long as there's no legality reasons, well, I do that. but I would wait to hear from. Oh him yeah, and you, you know it just spruce up the park because well the ones up at the Brown Park that are made out of the four by four wood, you know they're rotten out, and you go and put new wood up there. Then you got to buy the wood. You got to reseal it. Everything else, and by the time you get that all done, you've already spent a couple hundred dollars on the bench anyway. And then you're right back there where you started having to go up there and technically we need to be up there resealing those ones. But they've gotten the rot from the sprinklers hitting and everything else and these things are plastic and guaranteed not to break for 50 years. So. Yeah. Well, I guess we'll wait and see what he has to find out. Yeah. We'll have to research it. Yeah, yeah. until he looks we'll at it. talk about it next week.
before and tell us the best. So be it. Oh, I thought I'd get it. I'd like to make a motion for uh, 10 minutes, 5 minutes. Until 8 10. 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 so much out of the Cornwell fund to pay the difference on the mulch. It'll bring it down, you know, considerably. Uh, the only thing we didn't discuss when we discussed that last week was the cost of the cement for the sidewalks. The sidewalks are formed. The wire's in them. They're ready to pour. John said he could pour on Monday. The rec commission is going to stand part of the bill on that. Uh, they're going to pay for the slab that's on the southwest corner for a set of bleachers and a sidewalk that goes to the drinking fountain. Um, I haven't measured it just exactly, but they're somewhere in the neighborhood of 12 yards. So they'll get about 40% of it. We'll get about 60. We're hoping, you know, John didn't have time to measure today. I caught him early. We ran down. He looked at it. He said, yeah, we could do it Monday. He did not give me a cost. But we don't really have many choices on who can do it. And we're at the point that we get it poured, we get the mulch in, we can open it up. So. You know, unless you want to change, why? So it's probably what, fifteen, sixteen hundred dollars. I would guess somewhere in the neighborhood of, you know, I, even to be even to be fair, maybe two hundred dollars a yard. You know, for the concrete and the labor to finish it, trowel it off, finish it. You know, we will supply our help to help screen it off, so it won't take that much. But and most of it will be floated; it won't be troweled. So, you know, I, I think you'll be reasonable with us. I really do. Um, the only other thing I have is that some of you might have seen the mayor give me a letter from Larson Environmental last time. We discussed it just a minute about uh, a cost for uh, two years of monitoring on the recovery stuff that's out the plan on the diesel fuel. That is a, uh, that is paid for out of a super fund that's taken care of by the state. They just sent us a letter to acknowledge that the state had accepted the cost and they'll go ahead and monitor it for the next two years. So there's no money out of our pocket on that. Other than that, that's it. So. Thank you, Jim. Yes, sir. 
Okay, uh, I think we need a executive session. John, Greg, on the mowing. Oh no, no, what did I need executive session? Last last city uh, council meeting, you guys voted to eliminate the mowing fees on those properties that are sold at uh, at the tax sale. I, I, I incorrectly said, well, I don't think you need to because I think that's already been taken care of. But we didn't do anything in regards to the tax sale. Find out that that wasn't taken care of. Um, so I asked Thursday, I asked the county attorney first to provide me a list of the properties that were sold at sale. The purpose being, somebody bid five thousand dollars for a piece of property, but the liens were only a couple hundred dollars. Um, leftover money would go to the person who owned that property. If the city eliminates the mowing fee, then that person is getting their money that should have been paid to the city because the city made the property. So I asked for a list of, of the properties that were sold and, and which ones, and I got a handwritten thing faxed to me that I couldn't decipher. <laughs> so I don't know if, the, and then I called the, the, the clerk, and apparently nothing has been filed yet. So I'm trying to chase it down. I want to give the city an idea of what it means to waive those fees now that the sale has already happened. Uh, typically that would have happened before the sale so that you can incentivize the sale of the property. Apparently those properties sold without that incentive. So um, for the purpose of the city reconsidering that action, uh, I was talking about it probably reconsidering that action. But I, I don't have that yet. I don't know if it's, it's been, I was gone Friday, so I don't know if it's Monday or Friday. Um, I did not check Monday because Monday was a busy day. But, it may be that I just give a donor a big call tomorrow and have them kind of first dog in the Okay, should we put that under an old business? Yeah, that's all right. Thank you, John. Yep. Yeah. Okay, new business. Uh, I think everybody's got a contract in front of them. Has to do with sidewalks and a grant. My understanding is we got accepted for a, for a grant that we applied on on the sidewalks, uh, and uh, I guess it's time to uh, talk about it, discuss it, see what we want to do. I've got a lot of input today from quite a few people throughout the city. But, um, I haven't had any person tell me they didn't want us today. Um, they've all called and we've all been all for it. I think you can do nothing but good. Um, and it is somewhat of a dangerous street for the kids to be cruising up and down during harvest and other times. So. And there's no way we're ever going to get that much concrete laid for that many dollars ever again. So I have had several people call me on the phone throughout the day, and they were pretty concerned about the safety of the street. And they thought it was the people that I talked to were all business people from town, and they thought that uh, this was something that needed to be done. I kind of left it with them that uh, I'll take that under consideration and I'll cast my vote. The only thing I do have a couple of issues, and Carolyn, you might be able to help me out here. There was something said or talked about the city, the part of the city was like $8,000 plus some manpower, and this contract's got figures $22,000, and I'm trying to figure out why. Well, it's because the manpower's um is valued at thirteen thousand. It basically boils down to I think about four people's time for me. Get me out like a hundred and it's a hundred and forty hours roughly of of time and um, value of equipment. So that's um, attributed to thirteen thousand of that twenty two thousand figure eight thousand is in 
cash. Does these four people have to be there all at the same time? No, no. Force account labor. Um, as the grant application reads, the city does not have the manpower or equipment to complete the entire project. However, reviewing the scope of work, the city determined that city crews using city equipment and materials have the ability to complete the concrete removal, curb and guttering removal, pavement patching, water meter valve height adjustment, and pavement marking portions of the project. In order to complete this work, it was determined that it will take approximately 168 man hours and an average hourly weight of 2586, including fringe benefits. The city um, equipment we used will be a flatbed truck, 63 hours at $35 per hour, dump truck, 42 hours at $35 per hour, skid steer, 40 hours at $32.58 per hour, backhoe, 18 hours at $33 per hour. You want me to keep going? <laughs> um, Anyway, it all uh, FEMA equipment usage rates were used to determine the hourly um, rates for equipment. So that force account labor totals 13,000. They call force account. We might loosely refer to that often as in kind. So it's your non cash contribution as the city. Um, that's valued at 14,480. And then the the cash portion is 8560 Okay, so, Ruben, is that going to be a problem for you guys to help do uh, a project like this? How about you, Jeff? You guys may have worked together. No, we don't have any problem. That was, I mean, it included a skid steer rental because the back of a lot of that uh, sidewalk is up in there. We did some model of pieces. And, uh, I'm not sure that that will cover the cost of skid steer rental, but it would be close. We rented a small one last week for the week. It cost us $600. This one will take one that will be somewhat larger than that. We, but uh, when we did the uh, when we did the bid, Mel and I did that, and I called up and I talked to Cat, and it, that did cover a week. What we've got, guys, is this grant is $222,000 if we choose to accept it. It'd be a cost to the city other than the manpower, about $8,000 out of hand cash. And I can't, uh, I would like to postpone this until the mayor got back, but this paperwork's got to be signed by August 16th. We're out of time. We don't have another council meeting between now and then. So, I guess, uh, unless anybody's got anything to add, uh, from the citizens or the council, mayor, anybody, will I'd entertain some kind of a motion. I'll make a motion to accept the grant for the city's grant. $198,360. With the city contribution, including men errors, is $22,040. Second. Any discussion? Any questions? Okay. We have a motion and a second on the table. Any more discussion? No discussion? All in favor? All opposed? Grant and the sidewalk project passes to the work. Wash the road. Okay, okay, on our old business, Vicki, you got we got a checklist yes. from Vaughn Felt, Bauer, and Vaughn Felt. Can yes. you explain that to the council as to what this is pertaining? It pertains to the uh, midterm audit. When we change city clerks, is what I'm asking. Is that correct? That's correct. Um, it's, they actually don't call it a midterm audit. It's an agreed upon procedures, and this is the list that you had asked them to come up with, what their normal list would be, um, and the procedures for that uh, agreed upon procedures. This is what they would do. Is everybody going to copy that? Is that something that you guys are 
talking about. You want to add? I assume we can add to this or yes, take you can some add away. To it, change, change it. If there's something that you wanted to look into that's not on the list, we can add to it. If there's something on there that you know think that they need to um, include in their agreed upon procedures list, you can take it out. And then uh, once you have what what you want, you can approve it, and then you can get it to them, and then they can get um, on to setting a date for. Is that the same list that basically you were going to have to send it anyway? No? no, this is a this is just for basically remember when you guys had asked to do an audit, right? Change it to this list. Okay. I guess I'm not seeing that list. Right. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay
anything else you guys want to throw out on the table? Because I think that would be something that warms it up. I have one more. Oh, okay. Uh, with your guys' budget, do you want to leave taxes the same? want to increase taxes how how do you guys want to go with your budget and how do you guys want to do your budget with the department heads that's gone sorry they're going to ask me that when I maybe we need to amend the agenda oh yeah do you want to amend the agenda I, I don't know if you want to have Bob gets off the hook when you start talking about taxes <laughs> but but it, that'll take two more weeks before they'll get their, I mean, they can start on it, but they won't get it finished without knowing those things. That'll get, what that means that, have to have it to well, the county clerk? you have to have it by August 27th to the county clerk, but she's going to let you, with the circumstances that it is, go until as long as she gets it by October 1st, because there's no way we're going to make August 27th. Then ask him to discuss the next so meeting. Yeah. Send them what we can and we'll take care of the rest next meeting. With that, I make a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Voted meeting adjourned.